Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to talk about counting methods, counting by systematic listing for one part and two part tasks. So first, let's just talk about counting. Counting refers to finding the number of objects of some certain type that exist. So it can be very simple from, you know, how many people are sitting in the room that you're in to more complex, like how many ways can you get two of a kind and three of a kind in a five card hand of poker. Uh, there's different types of counting things. So there's one called a one part task. The results for simple one part tasks can easily be listed. So a one part task is just, it's just one, one thing that you're doing. So maybe it's listing the results of tossing a fair coin. There's only two possibilities. It's either going to land on heads or tails. Usually when we're listing things, we do like to use abbreviations. So we might list the possible outcomes as H or T, where it's very obvious what H is representing, what T is representing. For this, we wouldn't want to use like X and Y because what, what is X referring to? Is that heads or is that tails? So since we don't know, we're just going to keep it simple. If you can, use the first letters. If you can't, if it's like heads and hails, you can't use H to represent both. So you'd have to do something else and you'd have to define why you're choosing to do what you do. Another example of a one part task would be rolling a fair die. And keep in mind that die is singular of dice. And the possibilities if you roll a single fair die would be one, two, three, four, five, or six. These things that I'm putting in the braces, that's called the sample space. And that's another element of counting theory um, that we'll talk about. Maybe not in this video, but we will talk about it. So the sample space just lists all the possible outcomes. It's a list of the possible outcomes. List of possible outcomes. Oh, there it is. Huh. Listing of possible outcomes is called the sample space. So rolling a die provides six possible outcomes. Flipping a coin provides two possible outcomes. For one part tasks, let's consider a team that has five members, Alex, Bev, Cora, Dave, and Eli. If we're gonna list the sample space, so we put the sample space in braces. And again, we can abbreviate here because all of the people conveniently have different first, uh, first letters to their names. We have A, B, C, D, and E. That would be the sample space of the members of this team. If we wanted to choose a team captain, let's say we put all the names in a hat, how many different ways could a team captain be selected? Don't overthink this. This is just one team captain. There's five to choose from. So there are five ways that a team captain could be selected. There are five ways, and those five ways are the sample space. It could be Alex, it could be Bev, it could be Cora, it could be Dave, or it could be Eli. So there'd be five possible ways. Going a little bit trickier, we're going to talk about two-part tasks, right? One-part tasks, that, that was it. Done. We're all experts at one-part tasks, probably. Two-part tasks are a little more involved. This means we have two actions to determine the possible outcome. So this would be flipping a coin and rolling a die. There's various ways that we could represent all of these because we could just like list out the possible outcomes. That's fine. And with flipping a coin and rolling a die, we're probably going to be okay with it. But we do want to make sure that we're keeping our information organized because if things do get more complicated, we want to have some way to ensure we don't repeat any possible outcomes or we don't forget any possible outcomes. So one way we might organize the information for two part tasks is called a product table. A product table is formed by the rows representing the possible outcomes from one task and the columns representing the possible outcomes from the other task. Okay, so for the product table, we're gonna label the, the rows, in this case, rolling a six-sided die, the possible outcomes, we're gonna put in this header column. So we're gonna put one, two, three, four, five, six. And then for the columns, we have flipping a fair coin, so we're gonna label that header row heads or tails. Then what we do is we're going to fill in all of these gray spaces with the mixing and matching of the possible outcomes from each event. So we see here it's filled in real nice. And then what we would do is we would take the row and we would say one, take the column H. This one will be one tail. Then we would keep going down two heads, two tails. And there it is filled in real nice and neat so that I don't have to keep writing these. And this would be our product table. So this is the complete product table. Now the question is how many possible outcomes are there? These are the possible outcomes. So if we wanted to list the sample space or the possible outcomes, those are the things that we would list and there will be 12 of them. Outcomes, there are 12, right? So we have one heads, one tails, two heads, 
two tails, three heads, three tails, four heads, four tails, five heads, five tails, and lastly, six heads and six tails, and we'll close out our sample space. So this would be using a product table to display all of the possible outcomes for two-part tasks. Thank you for stopping by.